the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson Wax and Johnson Self Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Bojangles of Harlem. never said, quote, life is never pointless when you're on pins and needles, unquote, which describes the mental state of our hero this week until just a moment ago when he received a telegram in reply to a theatrical advertisement he answered. And here, while his much better half is busy for a moment in the kitchen, he reads the wire that may mark a great change in the lives of Fibber McGee and Molly. This fast before Molly comes in. Now, take it easy, McGee. Calm down here. As shaky as a right hand at a class reunion. Shucks, I'm so excited I can't even... Re- oh, got it upside down. Fibber McGee, 79 Wistful Vista. Your answer to our ad received. Application for a position as stage director approved and accepted. Congratulations. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Company highly impressed your association. Such figures as Velasco... DeMille, Reinhardt, Toscanini, and Minsky. Hmm. <laughs> believe we have immediate assignment for you. Hot dog. Wire $50 at once to cover bookkeeping, postage, and etc. We will telegraph full details. Signed to Chippewa Entertainment Bureau for Basil T. Chippewa President. Boy, oh boy, oh hot diggity. They got a job already waiting for me. What a break. Whoopee! Good old Chippewa. I'll send that 50 bucks so fast it'll dazzle Basil. Hey, Molly! <laughs> Hey, Molly! Heavenly days, McGee. Stop that, Harlan. What's the matter with you, dearie? I just got some good news, Molly. I just got the break I've been looking for all my life. You don't say. Yes, sir. As the pigeon says when he smacks into the city hall clock, it looks like I've finally hit the big time. <laughs> now, take it easy, dearie. You thought you were in the big time before, and you always wound up getting the worst. <laughs> What's this all about? Well, in the first place, I answered an ad for a... No. No, I ain't gonna tell you till I make good. But you might as well know that I may have to leave town any minute. I gotta run downtown now and send a wire. Where's my checkbook? Up on your dresser. Okay, I'll run up and get it. I'll be back in a minute, Molly. Ah, dear, what a man. He can discover more ways to stick his neck out than a chicken in a crate. (laughs) But I suppose he's... Come in. Oh, Mrs. Uppington, do sit down and have a cigarette. Oh, thank you, my dear. I don't smoke. Uh, well, neither do I, but it sounds kind of tony, don't it? <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Quite in the mud. I mean, in the mood. <laughs> uh, but now, about our Women's Club May Festival, Mrs. McGee, I just stopped in to tell you that as president, 
I have appointed a queen of the maids. Oh, and who is it, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, my dear, you'll never guess. <laughs> it's the one member of the club who has the most toys and uh, personality, if you don't mind my being personal. <laughs> oh, now, Mrs. Uppington, you shouldn't have done it. I just know I'll have stage fright. Imagine me, Queen of the May, now. Well, pardon me, Mr. McGee. I didn't mean you. I meant me. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. I, I didn't wish any of the other girls to be put to any expense of costumes, you know. And as I happen to be the only other member with a gold crown... Yes, I just... I've often noticed it on the left side, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, the second more on the left... Now, please. I didn't mean that. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot, Mrs. McGee. We have arranged for a professional director for the festival. Ah. Yeah. Well, I hope he's better than the old flower pot we had last year. Where did you get him? Why, from the Chippewa Entertainment Bureau. Oh, yeah. And, my dear, he's been associated with such people as Velasco, DeMille, Reinhardt, Toscanini, and Minsky. Oh, Minsky. Mm. Well, that's different. When's he coming? Well, just as soon as I wire them $50 to cover bookkeeping, postage, etc. <gasps> oh, my, it's going to be a wonderful feeling to know there's to be an expert at hand with you every step of the way. Someone whose very voice gives you confidence. Oh, I had a little cat and her name was Nellie. She had hair on her back, but none on her kittens. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. McGee? Well, I, I must be going, my dear. Oh, I, uh, I see you have your hat on, Mr. McGee. Do you walk my way? Oh, no, I don't, Uppy. I've often tried it just to amuse Molly, but... <laughs> Somehow I can't quite get that haughty, flat-footed effect. <laughs> that flat-footed? Yeah, yeah. Well, I must say that... Well, goodbye. <laughs> What's old Uppy the Guppy swimming around in our fishbowl for? <laughs> well, it's about our May Festival, McGee. And it's going to be beautiful, too. A parade with floats and a stage uh, play. Ah, home talent stuff. Just any minute now, I'll be tied up with a mob that'll make your little cupcake Rodale look like a flea circus. <laughs> oh, really? Don't be so conceited, McGee. Huh? It's too early in the spring to start riding for a fall. <laughs> Don't you worry, Molly. I'm going to be the biggest... I'll get it, Molly. I'll get it. Might be a telegram for me. Oh, for goodness sakes, McGee. What's got into you? Come in. Hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. <laughs> Sorry, I ain't got time to talk to you now, old-timer. I gotta run downtown and send a telegram. Go on that way myself, Johnny. Wait a minute and I'll give you a lift. Oh, fine. Say, how you kids fix with Christmas cards? Christmas? <laughs> Christmas cards, did you say? Why, this is only April 30th, Mr. Oldtimer. It's, uh, let's see now, 238 days till Christmas. Sure it is, daughter. But you won't want to shop on Saturdays and Sundays. That takes off 68 days, so that only leaves 170 days. Then there's six holidays and 25 broadcast days. That leaves 139. There's two Friday the 13th between now and Christmas. You don't want to shop on them days. He's 137, got to allow about 30 days from grading, 10 days for delivery. Another 10 days for dressing and mailing. You'll be out of town 62 days that summer, making it only 25 days. <laughs> Count off about a week to select the cards you want. That leaves 18 days. Gee, you kids better make it snappy. You got less than three weeks. <laughs> You shouldn't be selling Christmas cards, Mr. Oldtimer. The way you stuff dates, you ought to be working in a confectionery. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter. But that ain't the way I hit it. <laughs> the way I hit it. Look, Oldtimer, I ain't got time now to hear the way you hear it. I got to get down to the telegraph office. You got your car out in front? Haven't got a car, Johnny. But you said you'd give him a lift to the telegraph office. I am, daughter. Gonna carry him piggyback. What? Hop on, Johnny. <laughs> well, okay, old timer. Here I come. Mm. <laughs> I'll be right back, Molly. Hey, get your feet out of my hip pockets, Johnny. Hey, come on, Johnny. Here we go. <laughs> Longer, 
wood or stone? Most people would say stone without much hesitation. And yet there are in ancient palaces of Europe wooden floors that are still intact and beautiful, while the stone steps outside have worn away during the centuries. In fact, in the beautiful new Johnson office building at Racine, Wisconsin, there is a section of one of those old floors nearly 400 years old. It's still in excellent condition and mellow and rich in its beauty because all during those years it was protected with wax. Now, in our American homes, we can have beautiful floors with much less work than in those olden days. There are easy-to-use weighted brushes, and there's the Johnson electric floor polisher that you can rent from your dealer at small cost. And every good dealer sells genuine Johnson's wax in either paste or liquid form. With this famous wax polish, you can protect your floors against wear, give them rich beauty, save yourself hours of housework. And what's more, there are over 100 extra uses for genuine Johnson's wax, such as furniture, woodwork, window sills, lampshades. You'll find these labor-saving uses listed right on the familiar red and yellow Johnson's wax package. Try some tomorrow. come for me while I was gone, Molly? No, there weren't. And were you serious about having to go out of town, dearie? Oh, serious? I'll say I am. <laughs> As the guy says when the elephant sat in his lap, this is the biggest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> what is? This job I got. Tell me more about this great job, McGee. Who's it with? Big theatrical outfit. Oh, a fine thing. If you're such an expert on shows and things, why don't you stay here in your own hometown and help us with our women's club festival? That weenie roast. Sean, <laughs> I should waste my talents on a small-time corn carnival like that there. What? May Festival. <laughs> Bunch of bustles bouncing around the Maypole with gay lock. <laughs> Not for me, baby. Uh, don't be so superior. Huh? But I suppose it's just as well you won't help us. We're getting a real stage producer. Somebody with experience. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> I hope I get a peek at the broken-down old ham. <laughs> Probably an old buck and wing man. You know, stand in the wings and try to borrow a buck. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I said it's an old... Ain't bu- funny, McGee. Ain't? Okay, you can have it for your pageant. <laughs> oh, I'll get it, Molly. I'll get it. That's probably the telegram I'm waiting for. Come in, come in, whoever you are. Join me, Fisher. Nicholas Eleutherios, Eorios, constantly tedious, magnanimous, ex de Populis. What's the ex for, Mr. de Populis? Ex marks the spot where I had another middle name, Cupid, but I always remember to forget what it is. Well, what do you want to see us about, Nick? This big praise that is being put on in Whisper Vista by the ladies' club. The women's club, Mr. de Populis. What? No ladies? <laughs> well, get to the point, Nick. I, I, I may get a message calling me out of town any minute. Sure, Fisher. I am disgusting with your wife. No, that's not right. Your wife is the one which is disgusting. No, that's worse. Isn't it simply disgusting? <laughs> well, what were you discussing, Nick? Well, Mr. DePop sandwiches and soft drinks all along the line of March. I am taking care of all the arrangements, Cupid. But don't you would think you would be more efficient, Puss, if we just let the parade go right through my candy kitchen? <laughs> You mean let Mohammed come to the fountain? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it now, McGee. No, Nick, I'm afraid that wouldn't work. Now tell me, how much lemonade are you going to make? Uh, 50 gallons. Oh, fine. Now be sure it's good lemonade. Oh, my story, yes. I'm getting two of the finest lemons money can buy. <laughs> Well, aren't you going to sell any uh, sandwiches or hamburgers or hot dogs? You said it, Cupid. I'm making a special hamburgers that I'm calling a banquet in a bun. Oh. With onions, pickle, mustard, ketchup, radish, tomato, lettuce, chili, salt, and pepper. Oh. <laughs> what, no mayonnaise? <laughs> that sounds marvelous, but how can you make any money putting all that stuff in a sandwich? That's the secrets of it, Fizzer. By that time, the sandwich is so full, there is no room for the hamburger. <laughs> Well, now, doesn't Mr. DePopolis make you feel a little ashamed of yourself, McGee? How so come? 
Well, <laughs> look what he's doing to support our May Festival while you run out of town on some wild goose chase. Look, Molly, this time the goose is chasing me. And any time a goose wants to put a feather in my cap, I'll take a gander at it, see? <laughs> Come in. Hello, Fibber. Say, Molly, about this pageant the Woman's Club is putting on, is there any limit to the size of the floats in the parade? Why, no, there isn't, Mr. Wilcox. Why, are you entering a float? <laughs> I'll say I am. I'm building one for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Don't you just love the way we sneak these things in, folks? <laughs> With all the delicate restraint of a puppy in a shoe closet. <laughs> Quiet, McGee. Go on, Mr. Wilcox. Well, look, I'm building our float on a 40-foot truck, you see. Yes. The driver will be sitting in a big facsimile of a can of glow coke. Oh. That's a reasonable facsimile. Oh, lay off, Fibber. Gee. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> along the sides of the truck, worked out in flowers, are the words Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Uh. And then on one end of the truck, I'm having two beautiful girls in bathing suits with ribbons over their shoulders. Oh, yes. One is lettered, no rubbing, and the other, no buffing. <laughs> and then, a big banner with the words, just apply and let dry. Oh, they got wet bathing suits. <laughs> and, and over the whole thing, a tremendous alarm clock with 20 minutes marked off in different colored flowers, oh. indicating that Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your linoleum dries to a mirror-like finish in 20 minutes or less. Gee, I think it should be very effective. Oh, it sounds marvelous, Mr. Wilcox. But why have those two girls in bathing suits? Symbolical. What do you mean, symbolical? What have two gals in bathing suits got to do with glow coat? Popular products and figures to prove it. Oh. Oh, oh sorry, Mr. Ketchum. Go on, Molly. Go on, sir. Oh. Ah, figures to prove it. The way that guy's got linoleum on his mind, you think he'd spend his life standing on his head. <laughs> well, just the same I like, Mr. Wilcox. He's a gentleman. And what's more, he can be counted on to support any local project. Oh, I suppose you're trying to imitate that I ought to... Intimate, Evie. That's what I says. I suppose you're trying to imitate that I ought to pass up the opportunity of a lifetime just so I can stay here and watch the puny little panty waist pageant. Well, if you think... Oh, boy, at last. Get ready to pack my bag, Molly. This is it. Hello? Hello? For you, Molly. Oh. Climb back into your cartridge belt, big shot. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, you heard from them again, huh? What? Oh, I'm supposed to provide room and board for the director during the pageant. Why, certainly. I'll see that he gets plenty to eat and he can sleep with McGee. Hey! Wait a minute. All right, you... Mrs. Uppington. Goodbye. M M now, look, McGee. Forget about going out of town. Oh. You can't do it. I've got to put the director of our pageant up here at the house. Oh, but Molly, please, you don't know what this means to me. Let that scenery chew and cluck go sleep in the park. I don't want it. I'll get it. That's my telegram. Come in. Hi, mister. You want to buy some flowers? Hmm, do you, hmm? Only got a half a dozen left, mister. <laughs> uh, what are they, sis? The six best smellers of 1940. <laughs> Oh, they are, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, sis. Last year, about the first of May, you come around and hung a basket of flowers on our doorknob. How come you're selling them this year? Well, I'm no longer on a sustaining basis of it. <laughs> oh, you aren't, eh? <laughs> okay, I'll buy them. How much? Nickel a piece. Well, here's 35 cents. You got a nickel change? No, but I'll go pick you another flower. Oh. How far you got to go for it? Right in your backyard. What? You mean to stand there with the roses in your cheeks and my geraniums in your hands and tell me you deliberately took those... <laughs> oh, well, it was a pretty good stroke of business. Sis. Hey, Molly. Yes? You ought to hire this kid here as a business manager for the May Day Festival. Now, don't tell me what to do about the festival, McGee. Oh, well... Who made you an authority? Yeah, who made you an authority? <laughs> who, me? Why, in my younger days, sis... I was always directing some big theatrical production. In fact, I never felt at ease without a script in my hand. Script Tease McGee, I was known as in any <laughs> Script Tease McGee, the sensational and super sophisticated showman of stage and screen. 
schooling sappy cinema stars and the subtle science of screaming and scowling, smiling and smirking, sneering and snorting, snipping and snickering, sneering and sneezing, shouting and shooting, skillfully supervising stupendous spectacles, shooting smooth and succinct scenarios, shaming Shakespeare and showing up shore for his shabby shoddiness, soundly seasoned by storms and stresses, but take it, King's men, it's tough with these effers. <laughs> The King's Men sing with the wind and the rain in your hair. Rain, morning, wind, roaring, the night was dark and stormy. But how could my heart be cold with your two love and arms to warm me? Last night we met and I'll If you've got 18 imitation impresarios boarding here during this pageant, i got to get out of town. Any minute now, I might get a telegram order me to Walla Walla or Kalamazoo or Foster Oria or somewhere. Oh, now, listen, you might as well understand right now, McGee, you're not going. Oh, shucks. Think how people would talk. Huh? A stranger living in the house with you out of town. Oh, well, Dad, rather it ain't fair. Here I go on my own initiative and, and get me a wonderful job, and, and you won't let me take it. You're, you're wrecking my career, that's what you're doing. Let me get it. That's my telegram. Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, hello, Mrs. McGee. Well, what's the matter with you, McGee? If it's any of your business, Gildersleeve, I got a chance to leave town on a big new job and my... Well, I mean, something has come up. I just it. don't want him to leave during the May Day Festival, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're getting a big director to handle it for us, and he's staying at our house. Well, you're quite right about it, Why, Mr. McGee. She... He doesn't have... You to... stay out of this, Gildersleeve. Anytime I want your advice, I'll ask for it. No, look here, McGee. <laughs> Don't you take that tone of voice with me. I'll take any tone of voice I want with you. What have I got to do? Take vocal exercises just to bandy words with a Weisenheimer like you? No. McGee, don't be so rude. Well, shucks. Was this... <laughs> Was this something you wanted, Mr. Gildersleeve? Why, uh, uh, yes, yes, Mrs. McGee. Uh, remember you asked me if I wanted to play the male lead in your stage production? Yes. Well, uh... <laughs> I'll do it, by George. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> what you mean, wonderful? What's that guy know about acting? <laughs> I'll bet he's never been on a stage in his life. <laughs> I have, too. My theatrical experience goes back nearly 40 years. Oh. I played the part of the middle-sized bear and Goldilocks and the three bears when I was only five years old. <laughs> I was cute, too. I'll bet you were. 
you probably stopped right in the middle of the play and held up your little paws for station identification. <laughs> I did no such thing. And I'm getting a little tired of your scurrilous comments, McGee. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll make all the squirrel... The squirrel... What was that word again? Scurrilous, dearie. Is it bad? Oh, it's terrible. It is, eh? So, I'm squirrelous, am I, Gildersleeve? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to step outside. All right, McGee, if that's the way you want it. Oh, boys, boys, come, come I'm here. I'm sorry, Molly, I've taken enough from that bird. Outside, Gildersleeve. Certainly. I'll kill this guy. Now, what were we talking about, Molly? <laughs> Thought you were going outside with Mr. Gildersleeve. Um, oh, no, I just asked him to step outside. <laughs> I was afraid I'd lose my temper if he stayed in here. But look, Molly, you ain't really going to keep me from accepting that big job, are you? Well, temporarily I am, dearie. If you hadn't been so high hat about everything, you might have got the job directing our pageant yourself. Oh. But now you'll just have to stay and watch an imported expert. Oh, expert my eye. If this guy that's coming is any good, what's he doing messing around with little amateur tank town theatricals like this? I'll fix that guy. Now, look here, Gildersleeve. I... Oh, hi, bud. What you want? Telegram for Sidney McGee. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> Molly, if this wire says what I think it does, you're going to have an awful struggle keeping me from leaving town. Oh, yes? <laughs> Listen to this. It says, report at once to direct and star in stupendous spring pageant. You will be in full charge of production. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Chairman will provide room and board during stay. <laughs> report to Mrs. Molly McGee, 79 West Fulvis. <laughs> Chippewa Entertainment Bureau. Why, did you... Well, I'll be a... You'll be a what? I'll be a director of your pageant, I guess. <laughs> River and Molly will be back in just a moment. Can't you remember the days when your mother scrubbed her kitchen floor on hands and knees and spread old newspapers down to protect the linoleum? Even so, the floor soon got scuffed up again, and with the hardest scrubbing, it never really looked bright and fresh. In these days of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, all that scrubbing seems terribly old-fashioned. Not only that, but continuous scrubbing is very harmful. First, the colors fade, and the floor looks dull. Then the linoleum becomes water-soaked, cracks appear, and the surface splits. After that, you have to buy new linoleum. But... With Johnson's glow coat, it's, <clears throat> it's quite another story. There's practically no work, no rubbing or buffing at all. You simply apply glow coat, let it dry, and behold your floor shining with new beauty. The colors bright, the floor protected with a beautiful polish. Linoleum manufacturers themselves advise against scrubbing. Housekeeping institutes do, too. They recommend this safe, easy method, the glow coat self-polishing method. Now, folks, tune in again next week for Wistful Vista's May Festival. Arranged, produced, and directed by Fibber McGee. Floats built under the supervision of Fibber McGee. Dances arranged and routine by Fibber McGee. Theatrical production coached in the scenery designed by Fibber McGee. The leading role portrayed by Fibber McGee. Who else? <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This 
this is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Thank you.